So if you are able to do one of these three methods, really one of these two methods, then what you've got here is now Bing is going to start to keep track of the traffic to your website. Unfortunately, it does not keep traffic, uh, keep track of the traffic from the past. So if you don't set this up until next month, it did not gather any data from today to next month. So it's a good idea to set this up as soon as you can. Some of you have special circumstances where you're in a testing server, or a development server, or whatever. It's up to you to decide what you want to do because you may then move over from your testing server to a real server. The traffic will be perhaps a little different. Most of us, we seem to have a site that is live, so we want to do this now. And if it did then kick you back to the, to the screen that looks like this, great. You're not going to get any traffic until it starts to gather it from now on. So when we come back next week, I'm not ending the class yet, but when we come back next week, hopefully we'll see some data here. I'm going to go in uh, then to now set up the webmaster tools for Google, which is actually different than Google Analytics. We'll do both, Google Webmaster Tools and Google Analytics. Very similar process. So we'll do those, and then uh, we'll continue. So um, back on my handout, actually, if you want to go back there. I will go into detail about all these screens and what all these numbers mean next time, perhaps when we, get, when we have a little bit more data to look at. But let's just set these up today, and then we can talk about them. Uh, I'm going to go back to my uh, handout. I'm going to go back to the first section, Google Webmaster Tools. There's a link to the Webmaster Tools uh, instruction manual. It, I mentioned there also about verifying your sitemap, which is claiming your business. Uh, I mentioned sitemaps also, ownership, uh, Google Webmaster Tools, and Google Analytics. Now, Bing, because it came out after Google, uh, Google uh, has been around for about 15 years or so now, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. They've been around a while. So uh, Bing came out later and it saw what the other search engine did and it tried to do something better. And by that I mean that Google has information in their webmaster tools. Question of you? I was wondering about the search point you want to know where the web page is. Oh. Once, you, once you verify it. Yeah, you put in your web address. Right, I know where you Uh, you could use something like WordPress.com. Okay, but not at this point in time, right? No, this assumes you've already got one. So Google has some information on their Webmaster Tools screen, and this has some information on the Analytics screen. Bing has both of them combined. So you only need to go to the one Bing address right here, bing.com slash toolbox. But we have to go to google.com slash webmasters and google.com slash analytics. Perhaps in the future they will merge them. The two different bits of data that they show you are on the webmaster tools, that's more like checking the health of your site. Is your site down? Are there broken links? That kind of thing. Analytics, though, is probably where, you're, where you'll spend most of your time. That's where it's going to show you all your traffic, your traffic sources, the amount of time on your site and so forth. So for the moment, there's two separate sites and they need to both be set up. We'll do them both. Click on webmasters, google.com webmasters, and they've actually changed their name a bit. I believe now they just call it the Google Search Console. So go to that google.com slash webmasters. Uh, it seems to be different. This might have just been changed recently. Even Google Search still lists the address that I've got on my <laughs> document. Wait a minute, it did work that time. Maybe... I think it's... Okay, technically it's the right address, but you need www. I'll make a note on my notes. 
It looks like it needs www.google.com slash webmasters. Because technically, Google sees a website, sees two websites, one that's google.com and one that's www.google.com. Technically, they're two different websites, even though it doesn't look like they are. But here, Google says that website doesn't exist. But this one does, www. Here we go. So now they call it the Search Console. So how many of you currently have a Gmail email address? OK. So very similar here. You're going to either sign in or create an account. If you've already got a Gmail address, we're going to click Sign In, and it's going to say Upgrade to Google Search Console, or Activate it, whatever it says. I've already got one, of course, so I can't show you that screen exactly, but go ahead and sign in. If you don't have an account, click the Sign In button, and then it says Create an Account. Sometimes people ask me, I've got a Gmail account, but it's my personal Gmail. Should I use it? Sure. Just like I showed earlier with Bing, I have my email address for this account here, uh, but I use it for business purposes. I could create a brand new uh, Bing email address just for this. That would also work. For Google, I could use an existing Gmail, personal Gmail. This will still work. I can create a brand new Gmail for my business. That will also work. I don't really see any detriment to mixing the two. I've done it for years and it's been fine. So either log in or create an account. And then when we log in, I'll show you the next screen. Okay, so perhaps you see something like this. I, I do have an account here that's empty. I'll log into another one that has data later. But this is going to say perhaps, Welcome to Search Console. Get the data tools and diagnostics you need to create and maintain Google-friendly websites and mobile apps. To get started, add your site or app now. Now, uh, perhaps our flash is not working, but uh, there's a little video that tells you why would you like to set up Webmaster Tools. And it's going to tell you what I said, that this is for to monitor the health of your site, to help you get found, and, and so forth. So um, does everyone get some sort of similar screen like me? Yeah. Some of you might get a screen where it says three big boxes, you know, step one, step two, step three. Does anyone see that kind of screen? No? Maybe? So it's pretty self-explanatory, perhaps? Uh, mine says here, okay, add your website address. And as I said a moment ago, it actually does matter the, the www version of your site and the non www version. People could be visiting to your website as www.victor.com and they could be visiting as victor.com. We will set this up for both. Maybe also you've got a secure website, which is HTTPS. So we would need to put all variations of our website in Google Webmaster. We didn't have to do that in Bing. But in Google Mas Webmaster, we do. We put the HTTP and HTTPS version, if we've got that secure, secure version. If we don't, we'll probably still have to do the WW version and the non-WW. I'm going to do the non-WW version first. Doesn't matter, but I'm going to do that one first. So if you have other domains that funnel into that, you would do the well? Uh, in what way? Like, a little bit more specifically. Like, 
the my, other domains. Okay, my, my company's name ends in an S, so I also put the name without the S to funnel in in case people don't type the S in the end. So would I put both versions of my www? I would still, yeah, I would still do that. Uh, so you, maybe you'll be working a little bit double, okay. but that'll give you more data. Yeah, to see if you should still be paying for it, for example. So you're going to put in your website address. We'll do the non www version first. Add property. Again, I have to verify. And this has the same kind of way that Bing showed me, but just presented differently. This, and mine says, and sometimes it changes for you, but mine says recommended method. Upload this file, just like Bing option number one. So if I helped you and we uploaded a file, you want to do this. You download this file, it's going to be called Google something.html, upload it, and verify. If you had to do the HTML tag that I showed some of you, you're going to find it under alternate method, HTML tag. You grab that line of code there and you paste it in the same place that I showed you when I showed you to paste that HTML in the head of your site. This also has a couple of other ways. Domain name provider, same thing. Don't bother with this one. It's going to say, you've got GoDaddy? Here's how to go do it in GoDaddy. Have at it. doesn't really do it. So you're either going to do recommended method of an upload or alternate method of HTML tag. Question. So it says upload to your website, but it doesn't specify where. Is there um, when you want to log into your hosting? Is there a place where it's obvious where to upload it to? Well, yes and no. It's telling us here where to upload it technically to the root of your site, but if you're asking where would you upload it on your particular provider, that's going to depend on your provider. GoDaddy is going to have the file upload and it should take you directly to the public HTML folder. Some accounts are called the www folder. Some accounts are called the you know, web folder. So it's telling you where to upload it, but then on your provider you have to check where are your actual files stored. And the short answer is somewhere in the root, because it's going to look for victorsthings.com slash the Google file. It's not in a subfolder, it's right at the root of your site. Question. Okay, if I have a website and I've already done the Google Analytics first, do I do they are they are they matching meta tags or are no, they separate? They're separate. Oh, okay, so if you notice, there's also the option to use Google Analytics. So if you've already set up Google Analytics before, you can use that to vouch for this one. It's different code, but if you select Google Analytics and verify, it'll work. Um, if you're still doing the HTML, this is a different code. The Google Analytics code is like seven lines long, JavaScript, and this is one line of meta tag. So it is different. I can do either way. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do this. Question. So why is it asking for verify when it just automatically adds it? Perhaps did anyone else ever do this? Maybe did you have someone working with you before? Some, that might be related to it. Uh, that's a possibility. Sometimes that happens. So if it works, great. If not, then okay. we'll figure it out. Yeah. <coughs> yes? I guess um, when I went to do it under a recommended method, it recognized that it was a GoDaddy website. Hmm. And so it verified for me. Okay. Like, great. Oh, nice. <laughs> It was. So depending on your site, because again, people come in with different kinds of sites, so yours work right away with the recommended method. Great. Any method that you select, there's also Google Tag Manager. We haven't talked about that. We'll mention it briefly. But if you've got Tag Manager set up, you can use that to verify, to vouch for this one. So any way that you do this, click Verify. I'll give you a couple of minutes in case you need a little help. But if I showed you before, you're on the right track. So. Take a moment to verify that. Let me log in and then show you what it would look like if it's properly set up. So for each one, you said you do www 
WebsiteName.com, mm -hmm. then you would do it just website.com and then HTTPS. Mm -hmm. If you've got security. If you've got security. If not, do you still do the HTTP www? Yeah. Okay, so you do it like four different ways. Four different ways, yeah. Now, if you do it once the first time, if you um, if you do it right the first time and and the um, the WW version worked. Um, and it takes you back to that sort of screen like that. You have one site. Uh, for example, this client without WW. Then I would go through the same process, add property. So you don't call it a website because you can actually track your app in here also. So we call it a property. Um, I've added the non-WW. You, you should also add the WW version because you could be getting traffic from both, and I want to know about it. So the, pro the way is the same. Add property. It's going to ask you for the other version. You type it in. You will not need to do the, the, the whole verification of the file and such, just tell it. My other site is www, click verify and it should work. Because you've already verified, you have access to that site, it will just now keep track of the www version and the non-www version, and the HTTP and the HTTPS version if you have it. Yes? So you do a Google search and you just click on the link, does it use one or the other? Or? It will, and that's why when you see a Google search results page, uh, you have to see what it's what it's showing you. So if I'm looking at someone's site, um, this is showing right here. For example, www.theatlantic.com, www.newyorker.com. Some of them may or may not have the www, but that's why you want to set it up for both so that you can track either of the data. Okay, so again, uh, once we set this up, and, and next week I'll go into more detail about everything that's, that's here and what to do with it, uh, you'll see a screen that has these sites, and we'll, we can click on it to view the data. Uh, again, I'll go into detail next time, but um, one th other reason to do this is you're going to get messages. Google is going to give you messages broken links, malware, or issues, you want to make sure you check those messages and adhere to them because they help you. Yeah. The whole point... Question? The whole point to that is that these are the tools to help you succeed, so use the tools. Um, how many of you managed to get this to work today? Okay, good. If you didn't, you can try at home. But um, that's two of the three webmaster tools I want to set up today. So any questions on this before we do the third one? The third one is Google Analytics. That's the one that gives you a lot more data, very, very powerful data. Knowledge is power. We'll be able to tell where did our traffic come from? From another website, from a Google search, from Twitter, from email we'll be able to tell how long someone spent on our site, what web browser they used, all of that stuff, in order for us to craft a good marketing message or to evaluate if our current marketing is working or not. If I spent a lot of time on Twitter, but analytics shows me I'm not getting any traffic from Twitter, I can either stop using Twitter or use Twitter even more to try to get traction from Twitter. I wouldn't know that until I get some analytics data. 
So my handout should have then the link to get to analytics. It's supposed to be safe. We'll go to google.com, www.google.com slash analytics. www.google.com slash analytics. We've already got a, um, a login with Google Webmaster Tools or, or with the, um, uh, with the uh, search console as they call it now. So just at the top right click, sign in. It may or may not ask you for your password. But it might take you to a screen that looks different from mine. Let me just look over someone's shoulder. I think this one definitely looks different for people. Mine's already set up, of course. Yeah, there's a little brand book. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Those three boxes, step one, step two, step three. It's a sign up. Okay. So again, I can't show you that, but you'll probably <coughs> see three boxes. Step one, step two, step three, and sign up. Click the sign up button. And then what does it look like? Let me show you that screen. Okay, so then you'll see a screen that looks like new account. Let me stop here before I explain what's here because it, it is a little weird, especially for beginners. Let me show you the real world example. So I've got my account, and notice I've got several clients. I have folders to organize each client because I can use Google Analytics to track data not just on their website, but perhaps on their app, on their YouTube, on their blogger, you know, different websites. So it's a good idea to organize that as, as an example, this client here, vmcampus.com. I have here that I'm tracking the DeviantArt social network, the main website, the blog, and the YouTube, so I can get traffic and data for each of those for each of those items. Google calls this folder an account, which is weird. So it's going to ask you, create an account. Well, I thought I already have an account. No, it's really asking you to create a folder to organize the properties. And a property could be a blog screen, a YouTube screen, a social network, an app. It's a property. That's what the screen is asking us over here. Account name. Accounts are the topmost level of organization and contain one or more tracking IDs or properties. So think of it. This is the name of the folder. Let me show you again how I'm doing it for clients. I have the name of the client as the account, as the folder. And then the IDs inside. This one's only tracking one thing, their main website. This one down here is tracking their website and the YouTube. This one a few more. One word of warning, you cannot move one ID to another account, unfortunately. If you create a property, an ID, in a particular account, you cannot move it over. I've contacted, I've been on the phone with Google to complain. And they said, sorry, we don't, we don't, we don't have that. Maybe we're working on it. We're, we're going to try to work on it. But that's an issue that's been there for, I don't know, 10, 15 years? They've never <laughs> fixed it. Exactly. And I, I have not been complaining for 15 years, but uh, when I've been complaining in these last few months, uh, they said they, they don't have that. And um, I've read of forums and such, and people are, are, other people have complained also. Now, organizationally, that might be a problem, but technically, there's no problem. You're going to get the data. And I'm saying that because years ago, when we first set this up, we set it up the wrong way. So our company is PMD Interactive, and inside of there, some of our earliest clients, we put it that way. Instead of putting this client in its own account, we put it in this account. And that one, that one. but that was years ago. So current clients, we create a new account, and we add the properties 
to the new account. So that's just a little word of warning there. So here, okay, account name. Um, just type the name of your website because your website could hold, I mean, because your account here could hold your main website, could hold your blog, your YouTube, your social media, etc., etc., your Etsy, all of that. Yes? So it's basically a folder? Yeah, basically the folder. So I'm going to call this Victor's Web Designs. And then it asks for the property itself, the the actual thing you're tracking, the website, the blog, the shop, the app. So that's going I'm gonna call it main website. So Victor, when you have all this voltage, do you use the same UA code for all those? No. Each one is a different UA code. Your data is gonna get muddled up if you're using the same one because it's different it's different properties. Yes. Yeah. It's buried inside the settings somewhere. I think it's under settings, channel settings. There's going to be in there maybe even one more step into the advanced screen. There is a place to put this, this in there as well. So I'll call this main website. And then the website address. Notice here, do you mean the HTTP version or the HTTPS? On Google Analytics, you don't need to set up the WW version and the non-WW version. So I'm going to add either or Victor, victorswebdesigns.com. We have industry category. You're going to see a lot of data being collected. If you select one of these industries, it will try to show you the more relevant information easier. You'll still be able to view all 200 pieces of data, but maybe the 17 most important will show up first if I set myself up as a science website. And then it'll show me the 12 most important ones if I'm in the computer and electronics um, industry. There's a bunch of them here, so hopefully you find the one that relates to you. Let's see, mine's web design. I'm just going to say computers and electronics, unless there's a better one. There's no wrong one. You can always change this later. But um, it's about presenting you the data. Reporting time zone. That's probably set correctly. If not, set it to the right time zone. And data sharing. I recommend turn them all off. This is, are you letting Google Analytics share your data with other Google products and services, yes or no, for benchmarking purposes, which will be anonymized, but it will then be aggregated with a bunch of other sites. Technical support, if you need to get in touch with them, do you want to share it with them? And account specialists, which are really the people that want to sell you Google products. I recommend you turn them all off. Uh, they can be turned on as necessary, when necessary. So if you want, don't want to share your, your data, if you're, you know, uh, maybe or maybe not accurately, maybe this will, uh, this could be a privacy issue and such. So um, you can turn them off, you can turn them on later. You're going to be able to set up 100 accounts here. 15. Go ahead and get tracking ID. You get a pop-up that has all of this thing that no one reads but everyone agrees to. It's uh, about what you will and will not do with with this and limitations and liability and everything. And you're always going to go into the bank site to locate them? Right now we're on Google, so uh, you can get the information from Bing or Google. Oh, so you go, so you go to Google and put your site in and go to the page. Well, this is to see where traffic is coming from, not going oh, to. Says when you have 13 accounts, you could have 100. Uh -huh. well, how are you going to get to the, how are you going to find them? 
Well, they're all right here on my home screen once I set it up. On a Google page. Mm -hmm. okay. So you can read that um, and then click accept. If you don't accept it, click don't and then you don't have access to it. So it's kind of either or. Click accept. And now, so there was a little confusion at the beginning about, okay, it's asking me to create an account. Here's some more confusion. The Google Analytics is very confusing. There's just a lot of screens and data to look at. Uh, don't leave this page, but I'm going to show you here. Home Reporting Customization Admin. So don't leave yet, but if I go to Home, this lists all my accounts, all my folders. Under reporting, I would see all of the data of one particular um, ID. Customization I can set up so that I can make so that I can organize all of those screens into something more compact. And admin is where we're currently at with a bunch of other screens where I can set right now we're currently looking at this, a tracking ID. In order for this to, to work, for you to verify this, in a sense, you need to copy this code to your site. So there is no upload like the other methods. There's no upload a file. You have to attach this, you have to add this code to your site. This is your tracking code. Copy and paste it into the code of every page you want to track. So if you're doing a classic kind of website like with Dreamweaver, you have a home page, an about page, a contact page. You have home.html, contact.html, about us html. I would need to copy this line of code and paste it into the code of those three pages if I wanted to track, if I wanted Google Analytics to track the data of all those three pages. On a modern Search on a modern web design tool like Dreamweaver, Joomla, Drupal, Wix, etc., etc., Squarespace, it all is reliant on templates. So if you copy this to the main template of your site, it will then be copied to the rest of your sub pages. It'll trickle down to all of your sub pages. So that's good. The only tricky thing is, again, you have to do it by a copy and pasting of code. You can't just copy this and paste it into a new blog post. You have to edit the original template file. And that's the one that usually people will need some help on. But for most of you, if you went into your, <laughs> in, if you found your script section like we did, or maybe your head section like we did, paste it there. For those of you that I wasn't able to show you that, we'll have to look individually. Yes? For WordPress, does it automatically do this? Or do you, where do you put this in? I'm going to show exactly for WordPress. Okay. Um, in one moment. Yes? Possibly. Let me, let me show you here. I'm going to pull up a website. If you're looking at the code of your website, hopefully you see something similar to HTML head. So you're going to look for a tag, a code that says head. If it says header, that's different and that you wouldn't put it in there. You would find your code where it says head, and there's going to be head, and somewhere it's going to be the pair, its pair called slash head. So anywhere between head and slash head, that's the head of my document. I have to copy that and paste it anywhere in there. This is if you're looking at the raw code of your site. If you've got uh, a WordPress site, which a lot of people have, let me show you some a really cool way to do this specifically with WordPress. And then if you don't have WordPress, we're going to have the individual help time. But let me show you how I would do this on WordPress. if you've got a WordPress site, and I have to say a caveat. There's the WordPress site that you buy at GoDaddy that has the name of your site 
completely like that. And there's the WordPress site that you buy or that you acquire from WordPress.com, which would, might be something like vmcompost.com.wordpress.com. Yes, it's misspelled, but vmcompost.com.wordpress.com. If you've got, if you've got the, the one that has wordpress.com attached to your address, you cannot do this. WordPress.com will give you its own analytics. If you've got WordPress, if you've bought GoDaddy, Bluehost, whatever, and you've installed WordPress there, then you can do this, what I'm about to show you. If you have one that's attached to WordPress domain, can you transfer to your non-WordPress domain later? You can. You should be able to uh, transfer any domain to any provider, just like we can, can transfer a phone number from any provider to any provider. Now, it might not always be very easy, but you are able to do so. I know in my company we've had uh, trouble, this was years ago, to transfer away from a Yahoo account to a Bluehost account. But now they might have improved it. So if you've got WordPress, um, I recommend you use a plugin, a plugin that will do this for you and give you many more great features. So if you've got WordPress, I would go to plugins. If you don't see plugins, you have WordPress.com. You can't do this, as I said. If you hover over plugins, you can add new plugin. You're going to add a plugin. You're going to search for it at the top right here. And it's called Google Analytics Yoast. Y O A S T. It's like toast, but Yoast, but I think it's pronounced more like Yoast. Um, Google Analytics Yoast. There is a development team called Team Yoast. It's been around for years. They create plugins for WordPress that are very useful, uh, very powerful, and there's free versions and paid versions. The free versions can do 98% of what a person needs. The paid versions have a few extra things that s certain people might need for specific tasks. But I'm going to type that and search, press enter, and then you should see Google Analytics by Yoast. Track your WordPress site easily with the latest tracking codes and lots of added data for search result pages and error pages. It has over 1 million active installs, 4, and four stars, 313 reviews, updated two days ago, compatible with my current version of WordPress. You're going to find a bunch of other plugins that do the same thing. Google Analytics from this other company, Google Analytics from that company, from this one. The way you decide what the good ones are, Look at how many times they have been installed and what their rating is. Not a good rating there. It doesn't fill me with confidence to use. Analytify. Wow, that's a perfect five stars. Why didn't I choose that one instead of Yoast? Well, Yoast has 313 reviews, and this one, Analytify, five stars, but it's got four reviews. <laughs> so the th so the plugin author and their friends reviewed it. Two weeks ago. So maybe it's amazing, just not a lot of people know about it. But I'm saying my company has used Google Analytics by Yoast. It works great. It's very powerful. If you've got WordPress, then you're going to have a button that says Install. Mine's already installed, but it's telling me to update. But you would see Install, click Install, and then it would tell you, okay, it's downloading it, it's extracting it, it's installing it. And you're going to see the button to activate it. If you don't activate it, it's not really running. Once it's active, you'll have a brand new panel here on WordPress that says Analytics. That was not there before. Analytics settings. And that's what will automatically, for you, connect with your Google Analytics, the tracking code, put the code on all your 40 pages, 400 pages, and you're done. There's no button here that says then verify. You have to add the code, you have to save it and publish your, your changes, 
or, or save this update here. And then you have to simply return in an hour or 24 hours or whatever. And then you should hopefully then start seeing data here on your, on your panel, on your home screen. If you, don't have, if you don't have WordPress, I haven't forgotten you, I'll mention you in a moment, but what I want to say is notice we've got all of these extra settings under admin. Right now you might still be looking under just this screen here. Well, this back arrow shows you everything. You can edit settings of the whole account, the folder. You can edit settings of a particular website and then down to a particular page with conversion goals and all of that. Very complex. I want to set it up today and then next time go into more detail about it. But um, I'm just trying to tell you, there's home screen, reporting, customization, admin. Very easy to get lost. And when you're something, when you're looking at something like s settings here, that's still just a piece of all of the settings mm -hmm. under admin. If you if you turn off our computer and then go home and want to go back to check is this working, you have to log in. You have to go to admin, and then under the column of property, tracking info, tracking code. That takes you back here, and it'll tell you, not installed, or active and gathering data, or active and not gathering data. That's how it's verified. This is obviously a fake site, so it's telling me it's not working. But on a real site, if I switch over to a real site, check their tracking data. receiving data. That's the verification. There's no button to say verify. It's going to um, tell you it's receiving data or not working and, and so forth. So you don't have to set up then the accounts with the company name or your website name? You and when you, when you say accounts, do you mean these folders or yes. do you mean a whole Gmail? Whole folders and stuff exactly. Yeah, you see, so for this one, it's simply called Redbubble Store, but that was also a mistake related to something else. So um, this one of, of the company, of my, my company, has the, the account name, but the client information is inside of that. Better would be that we've got a particular client, and then their data is within that account. You cannot move from account to account, but the data will still be tracked. The, the best answer that the Google representative told me was, well, what you can do is set on the proper account, you can set it up again. This will give you a brand new tracking code, different from that one, and therefore it will start tracking it from that point. I say, but then what happened to my old data? It's still there in the other account. So that's not even a solution. All of that data that was over there stays over there. This data here now will be brand new starting from zero. So. Just for organization, that's not something we're willing to do. Yeah, it doesn't look exactly how we want here, but it works. So until they fix that, until they add the ability for me to click this and drag it down here, we can live with it. I want to also mention in the admin screen here, um, I set this up on my personal email, and I'm doing it for clients. That's fine. What I can then do is add more team members of my company to edit or view this data, and of course, the owner. So within each of these columns, I have user management, user management, user management. At the topmost level, account, if I go to user management and add other email addresses here, they will have access to all the data below this level. So they will have access to view uh, all of the data within this particular account, which would be all of these accounts here. 
I could say instead, okay, I'm giving someone too much access. In the property column, I could say for this particular property, just the blog, add a user. So now the user will only see the data of that particular property. Even more fine-tuned, I could go into the third column here and select a view if I've set up views. So if I have a screen that I only want a particular person to see, I could show them only that screen of data. Nothing about the traffic coming from Twitter, nothing about the bounce rate and other things, just about the, the traffic from a Google search, let's say. So I have those three columns that I can give access to, and they're from general to specific. So I created my personal account, and then I put the, the, the owner of that restaurant, I put him into the property here, so they can see their property. Not here, because then they would see everything. They would see all of the other clients. Or I could go even more fine-tuned and only let them see a couple of things. So that's what I wanted to cover in regards to the webmaster tools. Again, foundational stuff, because then we want to, on day three, we've got these keywords and concepts and all of that. Let's apply them to our site. I'll, be, I'll give you a handout with a bunch of advice on what to do, and we'll do it together. And it doesn't matter if you've got WordPress or Wix or whatever. I'll talk about writing more effective call to actions. I'll write about adding meta tags and keywords and where to do it, how to do it, all of that. And then once we've got all this foundational stuff, we'll be able to tell, we'll be able to see. Our traffic was minimal down here, and after I did this stuff, now it's up here. Great, and it's up here for a while, now it's coming down again. What do I do? I'll talk about that, so we keep it up again. But we won't know if our efforts are effective unless we've got analytics set up, webmaster tools. We do now, hopefully next week we'll have some interesting data to look at, and I'll explain it all as much as I can. Any general questions on anything we talked about today? All right, so uh, remember I gave you two handouts. You can take them with you if you'd like, or print them. I'll turn the printer back on, the Webmaster Tools PDF, and the con Client Marketing Strategy. So when we come back next time, we'll keep learning more SEO.